Yes. That's the best place to be. And that's why I don't need to go to the bars and I don't need to go to the clubs. <laughs> Amen. Because you can drink from the Holy Spirit much better than wine and whiskey. Praise God. <laughs> and there's no, what's that called? Hangover. Praise God. <laughs> no headache. <laughs> Amen. Amen. How many of you remember what was taught last uh, Sunday? Last Sunday. The DNA of faith, yes. The DNA of faith. Your DNA matters. Your genetics matter. Believe me, your genetics matter. Praise the Lord that you have good genetics. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That you have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Amen. Your genetics matter. What's within you matters. What you have received, what you have received from your ancestors matter. And we receive from our spiritual ancestors. We receive from Moses. We receive from David. We receive from Peter. We receive from Paul. We receive from Smith Wigglesworth. We receive from all those that have gone before us. And they are still watching us from heaven. You are not on your own. You are not by yourself. You are compassed by great witnesses. Amen. So last Sunday, I talked about the DNA of faith. One which is grace. Without grace, there is no faith. Faith is not a formula. Faith is not a formula. Faith is a gift from God that you can grow and you can show. <laughs> Amen? So that's number one. If you've forgotten it, please listen to it again. It pays to listen to your sermon again and again. I have to listen to it myself. Today, the DNA of faith to wisdom. Wisdom. Go to Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 2 with me. Oh, okay. Okay, then just listen. All right. Yeah, okay, just listen. Okay, and if you have your Bible in your phone, on your phone, please use it. Your, your Bible with your tablet, your phone, use it. All right. It's much better to have your Bible. Matthew, so you're not dependent, okay, on uh, whatever is around you. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Now listen. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, behold, that means look, pay attention. There came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born of the king? of the Jews, that is born king of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Now let me ask you, who wrote the Bible? The Holy Ghost, all right? Men moved by the Holy Spirit. So why did the Holy Ghost in this particular chapter, in this particular verse, Matthew chapter 2 verse 1, which Matthew is a gospel, is one of the four gospels. So why did the Holy Ghost, or why does the Holy Ghost still call the men who had come all the way to worship Jesus wise? Why did the Holy Ghost, or why does the Holy Ghost still call them wise men? Number one. Because they could discern the coming of the king. That's number one. They could discern the coming and the presence of the king. It is important that in your life and in my life, that we can discern the presence of the king. The word king means dominion. It means authority. If Jesus is your king, then his reign comes all over you. His will comes all over you. His army is for you. You belong to his kingdom. You are his kingdom citizen. You carry his dominion. You carry his authority. You carry his kingship. And you're wise. 
It's because of this wisdom that you can operate by faith, that you can bind the demons. You have power because of whom you have submitted to, whom you have made your king. And that's why the Holy Spirit in this scripture call them wise men. So let me ask you, when the wise men, when they went to Jerusalem, when they went to Jerusalem, when they went to visit Jesus, were the Jews, were the Jews a powerful people at that time? No, they were slaves. They were secondary citizens. They were under the control of Rome. And did they have a king? They did not have a king. The king was Herod, a puppet king, not a real king. So not only were the wise men wise, the wise men were right and they were prophetic. They were prophetic because they had an insight into Revelation chapter 17. Revelation chapter 17 verse 14. Revelation chapter 17, 14, referring to the church, the warriors, the kingdom warriors, together with the Lamb of God, together with Jesus, shall overcome the enemies of God. Referring to the people that would work with the devil, the people that would be together with the devil fighting God. The church and Jesus, the Lamb of God, shall overcome them. And I want you to look at this title. For he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Amen. So let me ask you a question. Is Jesus the King? Let me ask you a question. Are you aware that he is your King? He's the King of your life. He's the king of all your circumstances and situations. Amen. His rulership, his governance, his kingdom is all over you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Come on, say to yourself, I have my king watching over me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So when we talk about Wisdom, we're not just talking about the wisdom that works now. We're not talking about the wisdom that worked in the past. We're talking also about the wisdom that works both in the past, at the present, and in the future. Wisdom has the prophetic element in it. And the church, the Christians, must get into the prophetic. And when you get into the prophetic, you are not worried about your future anymore. If you don't get into the foresight, if you don't get into the wisdom of God, you will always be concerned about your future. What's going to happen? What's going to happen to me? Am I going to lose my job? Am I going to lose my business? Am I going to lose my money? COVID was a big test of our faith. And how many of us had passed a test with flying colors? Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. He who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. We don't belong to the world. We belong to the kingdom of the king. When what's the name of our king? Jesus. One more time. What's the name of our king? Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. How many of us want faith? How many of us? You want the gift of faith? Lift up your hands. You want the gift of faith. How many of you want to grow your faith? Amen. Hallelujah. What is faith for? What is faith for? Faith is for battles. Now, whether you like it or not, you are involved in a battle. You have an enemy, and he's the enemy of your soul. Now, the song that we sang just now, O Holy Night, in sorrows, an era, in era, they were pining until they felt the worth in their soul. There are struggles in our lives because we're all the time looking for value. 
We're looking for self-affirmation. Somebody who is not treating me right, I feel angry. Somebody who doesn't give me the approval, I feel angry. When I underachieve, I have such a sense of disappointment. I feel that I've screwed up. Your self-worth is very important to you. Come on, be honest. Your self-worth is very important to you and it's very important to God. It's God-given. And our self-worth is in our soul, not in our spirit. Your self-worth is in your soul, your soul, your will, your mind, and your emotions. You need to know that you are valuable. You need to know that you're important. You need to know that you're significant. You need to know that you can achieve things. You need to know that people appreciate you. That's your self-worth. And that self-worth had always been under attack. That's where the devil, that's where the devil, that's where the devil attacked you through people. And they even know, they didn't even know that they were attacking you. They weren't the ones attacking you. The devil was the one attacking you. But it's so important that your soul is in Christ Jesus. That your soul is in Christ Jesus. Your soul is in Christ Jesus. Your soul is in Christ Jesus. And when the enemy comes to attack you and you feel offended, you feel frustrated, you feel hurt, you feel undervalued, you say, devil, get out. I know my worth. I know my value. I know that I'm a child of God, a citizen of my king. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That is so, so important. Every one of us needs it. Every one of us needs it. Amen. So it's better that you acknowledge your need. And that when you acknowledge your need, the answer, the provision will be given. Can we say amen? And that's why the word of God says that he gives what? Grace to the humble. Those that are humble know their needs. They are not living in denial. I know my need. I know that I need affirmation. I know that I need appreciation. I know that I need approval. Where do I get it from? Not from you. Not from you. Not from you. From the Lord. Amen. He knows our needs. Right? To our weakness, no stranger. Isn't that right? What do you do? Behold, oh, the king. You have to look at him. Don't look at the people around you. Don't look at yourself. Look at him. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. It's because of Jesus that God is now accessible to you. Can we say amen? Oh, glory be to God. So faith is for battles. Battles are won by overcomers. Those who decide to overcome. What's the difference between an overcomer and a fighter? A fighter is somebody who fights. He fights when he likes it. He, he, he refuses to fight when he feels tired. He refuses to fight when he feels that he, you know, he, he wants some, to do something else, just want to quit or just you know, have a break. But an overcomer is somebody who is committed to fight and fight and fight until he overcomes. And an overcomer documents his failures documents his weaknesses to overcome them. An overcomer does not go by presumption. An overcomer goes by evaluation with the king. Knowing the voice of the king and doing the battle with the king, committed to the victory of the king. And will not quit and does not quit until the victory is won. Can we say amen? 
And that's why the Bible calls you believers more than overcomers. How many more than overcomers do we have here? Lift up your hands. Amen. The minute you say, yes, I'm drafted in, the power comes. Now, I want you to, to look at this scripture, Revelation 17, verse 14. Look at this scripture again. Okay, it's very, very powerful. They shall make war with the lamb, referring to the enemy. They shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. So who are the lords and the kings? Who are the lords and the kings? Come on. We are. Aren't you? Aren't you? Lord over your life. Kings over your life. Not king over someone else. Over yourself. Over your soul. Over your living. Over your situations. Over your circumstances. Because that's where the battles are raging. In circumstances. Situation. And when you put all the circumstances and situations together, you have national news. And when you put all the national news together, you have global news, world news. Everything is about circumstances and situations. It's about what's happening in the atmosphere, what's happening around you. Whether there are wars, whether there are sicknesses, catastrophes, pandemics, earthquakes, so it is very important that you be your own king, that you be your own lord, that you are the master of your life. But you cannot be the master of your life if you cave into emotional attacks. The realm of emotions, that's where the devils attack. The realm of mind, the mind, that's where the devils attack. One shoot, a negative thought. Okay? His fiery dart, negative emotions. You can't fight. You can't fight when you're depressed. Isn't that right? You can't fight when you're sick. You can't fight when your mind is taunted, haunted, tormented. Lift up your hands with me and say, I am the king of my life, my circumstances, my situations. Amen. Glory be to God. And let's continue to read. And they that are with him. How many of us are with Jesus? Yes. They that are with him. Read this to, with, together with me. Are called and chosen and faithful. One more time. They sound so good. They that are with him are called, chosen, faithful. One more time. Come on, tell it to yourself. Put your hand on your heart. I am called, chosen, faithful. You give the Lord a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's the way you think about yourself. Don't think the thoughts of the devil. Think the thoughts of the word. Come on, it sounds so good. Say it together with me. I am called. I am chosen. I am faithful. One more time. Called. Chosen. Faithful. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Chosen to win. Faithful to win. Called to win. Where is wisdom? I want to get wisdom. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Principal means the most important. What's the most important in you? Physically, naturally. What's the most important? Come on. Without which you're just drop dead. The breath of life. The minute you can't breathe, the minute you stop breathing, you die. That's why I'm so grateful I can sing. Because what's the technique? What's the key to singing? You can breathe. You breathe through your lungs. If you can't breathe, you can't hit those nooks. If you can't breathe, you can't talk. Because how, how can we talk? The vocal cord. Hit by the air. Your breath is very important. The air that you breathe is very important. The Holy Spirit is called the breath of life. 
He is the spirit of life. A lot of times people take for granted their living. And they, they try to get this and get this and try to get this and get that. And then before they die, oh, oh, I'm going to die. What should I do? You know, what's the feeling before death? It's just like, can you imagine yourself sitting, standing on the top of the cliff? And you're going to jump. You're standing on the top of the cliff. And the thought to you is the devil telling you, come on, jump. That's what the devil tempted Jesus to do, right? Jump down from the cliff. Kill yourself. And the thought is, what's going to happen? What's going to happen the minute I die? It's like you, you are facing the eternity. You're facing the uncertainty of it all. It's so uncertain. It's so uncertain. Unless you have the eternal life in you, unless you have the confidence in you, the clarity in you, you're going to say, what's going to happen when I jump off the cliff? What's going to happen when I finish this life on earth, which I can touch, I can smell, I can taste, and then go into oblivion? What's going to happen? And yet, humanity... We keep postponing that. We keep putting that off. We try to get everything else. We try to get married. We try to get a car. We try to get a house. We try to get a career. We try to get a job. And then we get offended, upset with each other. And neglecting what is the most important. Our life. The quality of our life. The condition of our soul. The condition of our spirit the condition of our physical body. They are all related. Spirit, soul, and body, they are related. There's no way you can separate them. If your spirit is weak, your soul will be weak. And if your soul will be weak, and then your body will be sick. Eternity matters. Eternity matters. Don't focus on your sickness and not looking at eternity. Jesus had come to give us what? Not a natural life, but eternal life. The longest you can live on earth, let's say 120, but you're going to spend eternity forever and ever and ever. And if you're not sure about Jesus, if you're not sure about your salvation, if you're not sure, and it's like you wake up with a nightmare, Every night, all the time. How many of you have had nightmares and you were so happy that it was a nightmare, a dream, that you could wake up from it? But if you don't know Jesus, surely in your heart, peacefully in your soul, you're going into an oblivion that's a nightmare that has no end from which you can never wake up. We don't want our families to, do, to go there. We don't want our friends to go there. We don't want anybody to go there. And that's why we're reaching out. That's why Jesus had come. Amen? It's important for us to stop fighting one another. You call yourself a Christian. You're fighting all the time at home. You're swearing and you're cursing when you're upset and angry. You know, you're fighting God. You think you're fighting that person? You're not. You're fighting God. You're fighting against the truth. You're being driven by demons. And the devils are using you to ruin the testimony that's in you. So what is wisdom? Wisdom is discerning the presence of the king. Because the king is with me. Nobody can harm me. And devils, you're not terrorizing. You're not terrifying me. You're not. You cannot. And the joy comes. Weeping may remain for a, light, for a night. You may feel sad. When you're in the wilderness, when nobody understands you, when nobody can touch you, and you're being tormented, you're being scolded, you're being ter what's that? terrorized. The joy comes in the morning. What's the difference between night and morning? What's the difference between night and morning? Morning is the time when the light comes. 
when you're in darkness, you need to be able to discern that you're under attack. The minute you keep your eyes on people, the devil is clapping his hands because you don't know what's happening in the spirit. You need to know that when you're caught in a moment of wilderness, in the moment of terror, in the moment of excessive sorrows, in the moment of rage and anger, the devil is attacking you. Not only is he attacking you, he's also attacking the people around you. The moment you find yourself, you catch yourself doing things that you should not do, saying things that you should not have said, caving into the lust of the flesh, you must know the devils are attacking you. And as soon as you know, as soon as you know, the light comes. Because the king is in you. The king is for you. He's not against you. The king is for you. He's not against you. And as soon as you know, the presence comes. And as soon as the presence comes, the light comes. And you're awake to righteousness. And don't sin anymore. How many of you know what I'm talking about? So when Jesus told the woman caught in the act of adultery, Jesus did not condemn her. Jesus did not throw any rocks at her like the rest of the Pharisees. Jesus is forgiveness in person. Jesus is forgiveness personified. His incarnation, forgiveness. His power, his incarnation is forgiveness and power. And there is not even one word of God which is without power. And what did he say? He said, go and sin no more. It's not a religious chastisement. It's empowerment. When he told the woman, go and sin no more, all the sin, all the demons left her. At that moment, all the devils left her. And she had within her the determination, the will of the Father, the holy emotions, the mind of Christ to go and sin no more. Stupidity had left and wisdom had come in. Amen. Come on, lift up your hands and thank the Lord. And that's what Christianity is about. That's what the new birth is about. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. I resist and I rebuke all negative old emotions from the old man. Can we say amen? Come on, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. That's how you receive revelation. It's no longer I that live, but Jesus who is living in me. That's the reality. The reality of the word. The reality of the truth. I am stupid no more. Glory be to God. I'm stupid no more. I've got the DNA of faith. I've got grace. I've got wisdom. Can we say amen? Wisdom is the principal thing. Now, I want you to continue to read. Therefore, there is a very important word. Pay attention whenever you come across that therefore. Therefore, what's the word after that? What's the word after that? Get. So get is whose job? Your job or God's job? God's job is to give. My job is to get. Get. And continue to read with all your, it's like the Holy Ghost is saying, come on, come on. You. With all your, all your getting. All your getting. Get understanding. So how many times the word get is repeated in this one verse? Three times. Get, getting, get. Come on, say it with me. Get, getting, get. One more time. Get, getting, get. Your life is like a bag. Okay, I'm, I can see Princess handbag. Nobody can put anything into your life unless you permit him or her. So 
somebody could have abused you, but you can say, I refuse to live in abuse. Because you are a spirit. What happens in your soul matters. I'm determined to walk out of this rubbish. Amen. Your life matters. And your thinking matters. You can choose your thoughts. You can choose your emotions. That's the mind of Christ. The autonomy, the power to choose had been given, restored back to you through Jesus. And that's why Jesus said, now you can tread on serpents and scorpions. When he said you can, then you can. Smith Wigglesworth, a very, very, you know, powerful evangelist. He wasn't college, he wasn't even college educated. He did not have a high school certificate. He didn't have a university degree. But God used him in his simplicity, in his simplicity and in his faithfulness to the word. And in his lifetime, he raised more than 30 people from the dead, documented. Simplicity is God's blessing. Sometimes we get into troubles because we think too much. We assume too much. We think too much. And we weave a cocoon around ourselves. Wisdom is simple. Wisdom is the principal thing. We need to get wisdom. Let me ask you a question. If God tells you to get wisdom, where can you get it? The word. The word. The word had become flesh and dwelled among us. You have the word with you. Even just reading it, the word comes alive. Reading it with the Holy Spirit, the word starts talking to you. Listening to you, listening to the word of God now, the word becomes alive to you. It is sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Why? Because the word will become your living. Your word will become your circumstances, your situations. Your word will become what's happening around you. Your, the Word of God, when you read it, will become your emotions. The Word of God will become your thoughts. The Word of God will become your decisions. The Word can become you in person when you commit yourself to it. If you want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, if you want to hear the voice of wisdom, in the Word. The word, the word is the voice of God, the rhema word. Wisdom is the principal thing. That means when I have wisdom, I have everything else. When you have wisdom, you have health, you have prosperity, you have joy, you have peace, you have relational goodness, you have the blessings of God, you have prophetic power, you have the power now, you have the power to come. Wisdom is the principal thing. Faith is not a formula. Faith is alive. It's the Holy Ghost speaking to you. Faith is the Holy Ghost speaking to you. Faith is something that is alive, is burning within you. Faith is the force of your spirit. Faith is one of the fruit of the spirit. The word fruit means forces. You have nine forces within you. The force of wisdom has many, many manifestations. And one of the manifestations is the force of guidance. God will guide you. God will give you joy. And when you have that joy, whatever is happening around you doesn't matter. Can you listen to this? This is the wisdom. You may look at those around you. You may look at circumstances and situations, and you will die looking at them. You get so mad and you get so sad because you can't change. I've learned one thing, finally, that I can't change anyone. But there's somebody I can change. This one. 
But why do I get mad and sad trying to change everyone else? How many of you have got mad and got sad because you were trying to change someone else? How many of us have become mad and sad because things didn't go my way? It's time to loosen up. Come on, tell yourself, loosen up. <laughs> tell the person next to you, don't try to change anyone else, change yourself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> What is understanding? Understanding is knowing how God works. Like we have here Carrie, who is an electrician. He knows how all these things work. I don't. Understanding is knowing how God works. Why? So that we can work with him. So if God is saying, I need your patience to work with you, but you're saying, I have no patience. I want it now. God is not coming to you to work with you. You have to go to him to work with him. So God is telling you through the word, there is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. But you're feeling so screwed up. You're feeling so disappointed with yourself. You're feeling such a failure. But God says there's no condemnation. But I'm feeling condemned. But God says there's no condemnation. But then you say, I'm feeling condemned. <laughs> So who is to change, God or you? When it comes to fighting battles, all right, when it comes to fighting battles, we go to God's side because he's the winning side. You want to win your battles? Join the winning team. Join the winning team. You can stay in your team of failure and keep complaining and grumbling and hurting and frustrating, pointing fingers at everyone else and then God. Remember, when we point fingers at others, we're actually pointing our fingers at God, all right? And then God is there. Everybody is there cheering and happy because they're winning. But then you're in the losing team. You are among the losers. So what's the wisdom? Change side. <laughs> what's the wisdom? Change side. You may try to reason, why am I such a failure? Why did they treat me like this? Why did it happen like that? Why? You can reason till you die and go to hell. That's why Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, come on, listen to me now, you must be born again. A new set of thoughts, a new set of emotions, a new set of will. A new set of operations. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. So check, look for the presence of wisdom. So why did the Holy Spirit, why does the Holy Spirit call them wise? Because they know, they knew how to observe the signs of God. So if you go back to Matthew Go back to Matthew chapter 2. Matthew chapter 2. Look at verse 2. Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star. We have seen his star. I mean, how many stars there are in heaven? How come they said we had seen his stars? That's called discernment. Every Christian must know how to discern. Among all the stars, among all the voices, which is the voice of God talking to you. You are not wise and cannot be trusted with power until you can discern the voice of God from your own voice the voice of your flesh, and the voice of the devil who comes as an angel of light. They were called wise because they could discern that star, that star, the Holy Ghost, 
the voice of the Holy Spirit, that divine guidance, which is different from all the stars around that star. Every day in our daily living, we are surrounded by voices. There are so many voices in our mind, so many thoughts coming to us. But we need to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands for discernment. 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 Hunger and thirst for discernment. Hunger and thirst for the unction to function. Do not allow your human mind to, to uh, what's that word, to get rid of that unction. What's the word? Um, how do you express it? It's like when your heart is crowded with a lot of things. You can, you have no room for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Because you are concerned about many things. You have to think about so many things. You have to do so many things. Who is the person that's very famous? Martha, Martha. <laughs> in the presence of the king, in the presence of Jesus, she was upset. She was angry with her sister Mary. Jesus, you are the authority figure here. Everyone had come because of you. Why didn't you tell my sister to come and help me? Did Jesus agree with her? Did Jesus say, oh, yes, Martha, Mary should have helped you? Did he say that? No, he said Mary had chosen the most important part. Why would you bother about food when the king is here? Every day, are you worrying about money? Whether you can put food on the table? Cast all your cares upon him. How do we do that? Because wisdom tells me he cares for me. Any problem in our life, listen to me, church, any problem in our life is because of the absence of faith. It's because we can't see the hand of God. If we can't see the hand of God, then we struggle and we strive. One very important thing, Christianity is not what you're doing and that God gives you an approval. It's not, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and then take this to God and God said, stamp, approve, you can go to heaven. No, Christianity is living your life with God. It's the most important in our life. I can't live without hearing his voice. I can't. And that's why I hate sinning. I hate strife because I need to be at that level. I need to be with that purity. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Is there a prize for success? Of course. Does it mean that you have to suffer sometimes? Yes, of course. In the flesh, but not in the spirit. Amen. Did Jesus suffer in his spirit? No. Where did he suffer? In his flesh. All right? So praise God for that. So faith is for battles, is for us to overcome. Wisdom is in the word of God. Wisdom is hidden in the word. So get it. All right? So I've given you two reasons why God called them wise. They could discern the signs of the time. They were prophetic. Amen. The Holy Ghost is the traffic conductor of all the circumstances and events in your life. In your life, there's traffic going on all the time. Every day when you get up in the morning, you know, there's traffic going by you, traffic coming in, traffic going out, circumstances, situations happen, events take place. But you are the traffic conductor. You are the traffic police. You have to tell which event, go, you're not allowed to stay. Which event, come, you can stay. The Holy Spirit is the traffic director. Faith comes because the director is there. I have to allow the Holy Spirit to direct my life. I have to allow the Holy Spirit to direct my thoughts, to direct my emotions, to direct my will. And sometimes even at the expense of offending people. I have to decide, do I please him or please men? What is the long-term gain? 
there's a long-term gain and there's a short-term loss. It's better that you lose in the short-term and gain in the long-term. How many of you know what I'm talking about? I repeat, sometimes it's better that you lose in the short-term and gain in the long-term. So patient, be patient, be patient. Be accommodating, be tolerant. And don't think that you've got the answers. Don't think that God has to answer me and answer me right now. No. Sometimes answers don't come until, you know, for a while. Why? Maybe something in you, something in me that needs to change. Can we say amen? And changes are good. We need to change. Every one of us, we're changing every day. You're talking about comparing yourself with God. I'm not saying that you're a sinner. I'm not saying you're bad, okay? No, I'm talking about becoming better, better, and better, and more and more glorious, more and more victorious, stronger, healthier, more and more prosperous, more and more, more and more. Come on, say with me, more. I want more. Come on, one more time. I want more. One more time, I want more. I want more. I want more until we reach heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the law of heaven is different from the law of the natural. In the natural, every one of us is aging. You are no longer the same as you were 10 years ago. You are no longer the same as you were 20 years ago. That's called the law of aging. In the natural. Right? In the natural. We're all subject to the, the law of aging. The Word of God says that we need to be revived. We need to be quickened. We need to be revived. And that's why the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That's the scripture, by the way, that got me my driver's license. <laughs> the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That's referring not to Jesus' Spirit. That's not referring to Jesus' soul. That's referring to His body. And the Holy Ghost, the author of the Bible, he said, shall quicken. And he made it very, very clear and very, very obvious, your mortal body. Now, because the church, the pastors, the evangelists, a lot of times it's very easy for us to just preach to you about your character. Come on, change your character. Be humble, be kind, be nice. But as soon as we talk about healing and you get sick, and the people go to you and say, uh, you told me about divine health. How come I'm sick? And then the pastor goes, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I will lose that tithe. I won't have so much money coming into my tithe and offering box. I'll lose the trust in me, the whatever in me. Honestly, it's not about you. Who cares? It's not about me. It doesn't matter to me whether you love me or not. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I know that. Even I do that to myself. My husband does that to me. I do that to him. That's the human nature. It's not about us. It's about God. It's about his will for your life. He wants your body to be strong. He wants your body to be healthy. Why would he want you sick? Honestly, have you ever seen people sick? I have. I remember I was in, I don't remember, exactly, I think it's in, in uh, Japan. And I saw somebody, oh no, no, thank you Holy Spirit for reminding me, it's in Australia. One day I was in Kmart Plaza and uh, I was going down that, what's that, what do you call it? Escalator? Yeah, going down that escalator and there came a man in front of me. He had, his limbs have, um, what's that, shrunk? So, like, my arms, our arms are like that, but his arms are like this thin, this thin. And his legs are that thin, that thin. And he's gray-headed, so he must be about 50, 50. And he had a carer next to him, and my heart just sank. And I said, I curse you, you foul demon of sickness. I curse you, you foul spirit of affliction and oppression. Sickness is of the devil. Sickness is of the devil. God would never wish anybody sick. You need 
to have that in you, very strong. Don't ever say, I can be sick like anybody else. No. Don't ever say that God will make me sick or allow me to be sick to teach me a lesson. No, that's blasphemy. Sickness is evil and devilish. It's ugly. It's debilitating. And the source of that, who is the source of sickness? The devil. He's the one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So when sickness comes, we need to have that holy anger rising up from within us and rebuke him. Rising up from within us and rebuke him. Can we say amen? Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Discerning. Amen. Observing the times with the director living on the inside of you. And the last reason, why did God call the men wise? Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. I want you to read that. For we have seen his star in the east. We talked about that, discerning the signs of the time. And I come to worship him. Seeing a vision is one thing, but doing it is another. Remember in the book of James, the Holy Spirit said, show me your faith and I will show you my faith by my works. You say you love God, but you're rocking in your armchair and never do anything in church. Never serving. When you come to church, you are judgmental, you're critical, you don't like that person, you don't like that person. You're upset with little things. And then you raise your hands, so, oh, I praise you, I worship you, I love you, God. Christianity is for real. You won't change until you see the need. Oh, because I'm close to Pastor. I'm close to Pastor Doris. Yeah, I'm such an important person. That's foolishness. I want to stand next to Benny Hinn and have a photo. Because he's such a holy man. That's stupidity. It's important for us to desire to be real on the inside. I love the song, We Surrender. We're going to sing that. We need to please God in where only he can see. There are areas on the inside that nobody can see but yourself. But God can see. And he sees it not to condemn you. He sees it to help you. We're growing. The word growing means the need to grow. If we're growing, that means we need to grow. If we don't grow, then we repeat the same mistakes and again and again. The Holy Spirit has come on the inside of us. He's the helper. He's the strengthener. He's the comforter. He's the standby. He's the intercessor. So that means we need all those things. It's nothing wrong to be needy of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom. We need to tell God, yes, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need you. I'm tired. I need your strength. I'm angry. I need your forgiveness. I'm frustrated. I need your peace. Can we say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Be a doer, a doer, a doer, a doer, a doer. We don't have to impress anybody. There's nobody that we need to impress. Even you don't have to impress God. You don't impress him. You just be who you are. That's the freedom. Wisdom is about freedom. The freedom to be who you are. The freedom to be who God has created you to be. Can we say amen? Amen. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Thank you, Jesus. Well, you ask me, are there works of wisdom? Yes, James said, show me your faith and I will show you my faith by my works. Character is power. 
And in the, in the process of building your character, there is work. In the process of serving God, there is work. Sometimes you feel terrible, but you're still serving. Sometimes you feel bad about yourself, but you are still growing. So the works of faith can be works of training as well. Every soldier needs to be trained. So we must give ourselves time to be trained. We must be willing to be trained. We must be willing to have breakthrough again and again and again and again. We must get rid of any spiritual laziness, lukewarmness. Get rid of it. Don't tell yourself I need to retire because I'm this age. There is no retirement when it comes to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil won't see you as somebody who has retired. He will still attack you. So the army of the living God, we don't retire. We grow up. We are being transformed. We are being revived day in and day out. And if this is your heart, this is your heart. Because the church now is very weak. And God needs strong people like David, like Nehemiah, like Esther. Those that he will show himself strong on their behalf. So I'm asking you to not look at yourself. I'm asking you to commit your will to be strong in Christ Jesus. If you think, if you, nothing, sorry, if you know that that's, the desire of your heart is to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Can I encourage you to stand? Take your stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That you would accept the training, that you would accept the call, the called, the chosen, and the faithful. And you want to take the stand in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father God, I praise you and thank you. I'm praying for my sisters and brothers right now, all those that are standing. I ask for an infusion of your strength, an infusion of your strength for them to be committed, for them to be dedicated, for them to arise even in the wilderness and in the hard times. For your light to shine on them, even in the midst of darkness. Father, every person, spirit, soul, and body is precious. Precious to you. You bought each and every one with your own life. With your own body. With your own life. Jesus, we are yours. And the heart, our heart desire is to manifest you. Take over. Lift up your hands and say, take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over our living, our time on earth. Manifest your glory, your goodness, and your wisdom. This we all pray in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, Amen. Let it be so. You can be seated.